Make sure all the levels are straight out. The jungle, the jungle, the brothers, the brothers. They like so, on a road. Black yeah, medallions, yeah. no gold. Ooh. Hanging out with bars, hanging out with mess. Buddy, 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 y'all in my face. Both the lap. Jim Browski must wear a cap. Just in case the young girl likes to clap. Ain't for the win, but before I begin, I initiate the body with a slap. Drop the beat. For the fight from my tribe called Quest. When I see Buddy, I will never half step. I just do her travel style and inject. The buddy that I like is to be sexy and nice. Just good enough for the one they call fight. A brown skin buddy with shoulder length hair. Nice from breast and around area. Come on, everybody. I'm the Yo, yo, what up, y'all? Welcome to Big Time TV. I be your host, Rod One. And I'd like to welcome y'all to this evening's show. And before we get started, I just want to make sure y'all understand that Big Time TV is here for the people. If you yourself are sitting on the other side of this camera and you're watching us and you want to be here and you have something that you need to say and something that you need to get out and you want to make sure that the people know that, make sure you hit us up at BigTimeTVShow at gmail.com. All right. And before we go any further, I want to make sure I introduce my guest for this evening. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Because, you know, it, in the big time TV show, we want to make sure that people get what they need to get from the people. It's about the people. So, yo, without further ado, I want you to introduce yourself to the people and tell them who you are. What's going on, TV land? It's your boy, Mike Anderson, a.k.a. Poetic Mike, coming out of Durham, North Carolina, by way of Fayetteville. Glad to be here on Big Time TV with you, Rod One. What's going on? No doubt. What's going on, brother? Yo, so um, what we want to do is, man, we want to chop it up and get into your life a little bit and, um, you know, your reason for being here. So first off, what I want to do is I want to talk about the fact that you do have some literature out there oh, yeah. for the people. And, um, you know, I think that's very important that, you know, as writers, you know, that we actually express ourselves in the form of, you know, putting it in a position where we can leave it for people at that you know, for generations to come. Exactly. So tell the people a little bit about, you know, your story and your history about you, your writing and your books. Well, I actually have two published books. Uh, the first book, which was published actually in 2007, and you'll be surprised from where it was published at, but it is entitled The Lost Disciple, God's Revelations to a Street Poet. And the second book is actually entitled Serenity in the Dark, a book of poems and proverbs. And what these writings actually entail or poetry that I actually wrote while I was in prison. Right. So just to give you a short story right quick, I was actually serving a life sentence. I served 17 years on a life sentence uh, in 1991. I found myself facing the death penalty plus life plus 60 years and ended up taking a plea bargain for a life sentence. So as I was gradually serving that time, serving that life sentence, I found the talent and the gift of poetry and poetry basically helped me keep my sanity while I was in there. So right. I wrote probably about roughly around eight poetry books. Right, right, right. Okay. And um, that's another thing, too, man. We're going to get into that a little bit later, man. But the inspiration behind keeping your dream alive, you know, there's a lot of people out here who don't face those type of adversities and still don't want to take their dream to the next level. It's like people are, fa are scared to fail. Exactly. And, and, and in your case, you show people how you actually accepted a fall exactly. and turned it into a positive. Well, I know it wasn't all done by you. Not at all. So at all. I want you to tell the people a little bit about what inspired the change in your life. Because remember, you did tell people you served prison. I mean, you served life in prison for Exactly, exactly. Something that you did. Exactly. Something so, that I actually did. And right. Some so, things that I was involved with, a lot of the choices that I made, bad decisions that I made, you know, got caught out there in the streets, uh, started loving the fast money, was selling drugs, selling guns, got very involved with the streets. Uh, a lot of that stemmed from anger that had arisen out of my dysfunctional household. Right. 
My father was an alcoholic, an uh, African-American Vietnam vet that used to beat my mother to death and beat us to death all the time. So right. there was a lot going on in the household. And also there was a financial deprivation there. Now, keep in mind, that's the biggest story of the, the, the poverty stricken homes nowadays, that there's a financial deprivation. So that financial deprivation actually caused me to go into the streets. But as a result of all of that, I made some of the poorest choices and poorest decisions and ended up with that life sentence. Right. So... While I was serving that life sentence, you know, none other but the superior one true living God himself spoke to me in so many ways through dreams and was telling me that it's not over, that I wouldn't be in there forever as administrative would always tell me you're going to be here for a long time. Exactly. And I want to I want people to make sure they understand the fact that he said that um, from the all true and all living God. Now, we want to make sure that you understand that the, the the reason that you have to kind of feel some type of way about that because he did say a life sentence, but yet he's here right now. Exactly. And, you know, there's no prison guards. There's nobody waiting to take him back. You understand what I'm saying? He said a life sentence for something he did, but through the divine power, he's here. So those people that hear those voices, those those things in your head that's telling you to keep going on, you know, you got to, re- you know, check, take heed to it because this guy right here is living exactly. proof. Exactly. You know and, 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 and one of the things about it is that when you're faced by such an adversity and you have people that don't believe or have that same level of faith that you have to tell you that, um, you know what, Mr. Anderson, <laughs> I don't know what it is that you think that is about to be accomplished, but you're you're here. So you need to focus on the here and now, what's going on in here. And so I would always feel as if I should just go ahead and allow my actions to trump every single thing that was negatively spoken to me. Meaning that if, if, if I knew that it was being revealed to me that one day I would be back out there, then I had to equip myself in such a way. So while I was on the inside, I took advantage of every academic opportunity that I could take advantage of. When I went in, I was just a straight street slang box. You know, couldn't right. speak correct English, uh, was just pretty much uh, mind altered by a lot of things that I experienced product in life. Of the, product of the environment. Product of the There's environment. It's no different than any any other rest of us that don't understand the fact that it's something outside of our situation. Exactly. So what we want to do is, before we go any further, because we don't want to give them all right now. Hi. But what we're going to do is we're going to come right back. Yo, yo, welcome back to Big Time TV. I'm the boy Rod One. This is my man. Mike Anderson. Yeah, and this is how we do on the Big Time TV. So before we went to the break, we were talking a little bit about the um the poetry. Well, we were talking about your book. Well, we were talking about your story leading up to the fact of what inspired you to write. Exactly. And you did, before you got into the writing thing, you were talking about the educational part and what you took advantage of while, we, while you were incarcerated. Exactly. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to say that I know that... W- Doing the education part, it, it caused you to read more. It did, and it did. and the fact that reading more that expanded your vocabulary more. It definitely, and did. so that allowed you to be free to be able to write. Exactly. And though the things that you were talking about, well, let's just put it to you like this before we go any further. Let's talk about the education part real okay. quick. Just tell the people your education accomplishments that you accomplished. Now, before we do that, I don't want people to understand <laughs> that. I don't want you to say, yeah, I'm just going to go to prison and get like, it's not what I'm saying. <laughs> nah, what I'm saying is I want you to understand because this guy was facing life and he's here. So in the midst of that, this is what we're trying to you know, establish for the people. So tell the people about your educational you know, the things that you accomplished while. Yeah. Well, first education. and foremost, praise God. I don't have any student loans hanging over my head, but <laughs> right. But, uh, while I was on the inside, I actually, uh, got a, uh, associate's degree, associates of applied science in business administration. Then I also got another associates of applied science degree in computer systems technology. I actually earned diplomas in seven different vocational trades. And then I also got involved with a lot of self-help programs like, you know, cognitive behavior, uh, anger management, things that they felt as if you were involved with these programs, it was a plus on your record. And in the duration and in the course of me doing all of this, I was able to obtain model inmate status. But while I was on the inside, the poetry was just one of the things that I would always focus on. And I spearheaded uh, some talent shows. We were at one camp and I spearheaded some talent shows. And the poetry itself was always like a mixture of so many words that. Some people would always be like, yo, man, how did you put all those words together? I was like, well, 
since I was incarcerated, I was reading the dictionary the whole time. Right. So that was my biggest source of education because there were words in there that I had no idea even existed. Exactly. And then it helped most me become a, yeah. Most of us wouldn't because it takes a book. You got to open up the book. Exactly. And in a lot of our lifestyles, we don't have the time to sit down to even take up a book to learn anything. We got to learn everything as we go. Exactly. So, I mean, that's just, a, you know, something that we had to deal with. But um, as far as the poetry and the reason why the poetry, I relate to the poetry a lot because when you're doing music and things, I think people don't understand the fact that, you know, with poetry and writing, that it takes a level of consciousness that you got to have. Exactly. With, like, a duality for between reality and, you, you know, the life that you face and the, and the life that you want for yourself. Exactly. So let's tell the people a little bit about the book, because I know you got the book right here. Exactly. First of all, tell the people what the name of this book is right now. Now, this is the Serenity in the Dark, a book of poems and proverbs. This is actually uh, one of the second books that I put together when right. I was on the inside, so right. I made it the second published book. Right. And this entails a lot of writing. If you think about it, incarceration when you think about incarceration you think about a, a dark dungeon right. somewhere to where there's no light at the end of the road which is with a life sentence or even you know i was a death penalty offender um but I, yet still i took a plea bargain for life there was a darkness that i was i was just you know being entrenched by and and and, and the darkness itself was something that you got to overcome however if you think about it a lot of people don't find peace in darkness but i was That's able true. to find that serenity in the dark and mm -hmm. a lot of these poems brought me back to that level of consciousness as i was writing them and i would reread them because sometimes right. i was in the hole i might have been in right. the hole because the first time um one of the guys that got shot on my case actually um that didn't die he actually went to prison before i did and so when i took my plea bargain from jail they sent me to the same camp he was at right so i had to stay in the hole until he left the camp wow. and while i was in this hot hell hole for like 45 days with no mattress uh they only let me stay in my boxers and you know i mean i had like roaches and a, a mouse that would come in there every now and then i would have to feed them jelly from breakfast or something to keep them away from me wow. but i was writing i was constantly writing to keep my sanity the whole time and as i was writing these poems i realized that while i was in this dark hot hole called segregation that these poems you know, God gave me the opportunity to use my talents and my gifts to right. make room for me so that I would not lose my sanity. Definitely. And that that's the story of its own, man. You you could just talk about that and lectures and all kind of stuff to people to try to help motivate them to understand that. Even in because some people face that same dark place within themselves. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Incarceration and is not just behind bars. Yeah, yeah. In your mind it could be exactly. a terrible place to exactly. not be able to control or have free. So um so with this book, let's talk about how many poems are in there or is it a continuation of one? It's a continuation of several different poems. There's also a short story in the back okay. that actually talks about the defeat of uh, alcoholism because I vicariously lived alcoholism through my father's life. You know, he would right. always come home as, you know, drunken and, and, and just in a rage. Right. And so the, the last, uh, the, the short story that's in the back is actually about defeating alcoholism. And then there's so many other different poems that fights, you know, against the kind concepts and ideology of racism um being mentally uh drunk as well not being able to be intelligent enough to survive overcoming the mass oppression that's uh bestowed Definitely. upon yes. us how society is a capitalist society and if you're not able to actually adopt that level of entrepreneurship then you know you'll get sucked under Definitely. So there's so many different concepts and ideologies that's involved with this book. But again, it was those very words that allowed me to become serene in the dark. Definitely. So what we're going to do is, y'all, we're going to take a break real quick and we're going to come back. And then when we come back, we're going to chop it up a little bit about how you people out there can actually get this book. And you know, those of you, I know it's a lot of people out there watching now that can relate to his story, as well as some people that want to be inspired by his story. It's always good to support people who you know have been something and they're coming back. We'll be right back, Big Time TV. And this is actually your copyright. Uh, chop it up and in the break I was looking through it a little bit and I was looking at some of the titles of some of the poems he have in here and I want to just you know tell a couple of y'all a couple of them it's like he has this one that's called Exodus from Earth like if you can just think about what the word Exodus mean and then he says from Earth <laughs> so that that's a very interesting one I think that's an interesting title for one of the poems and then he has one that's called Treasure Hunt now and 
in in life we could treasure could be anything, anything. that we see is valuable to us and the hunt for that. So that's very th- I, you know, I'm gonna get into this, man. This <laughs> is really do, dope, brother, man. Please do. So what I wanna do is before we um we close out, I want you to tell the people a little bit more about some of the things that you've happened to accomplish, you know, dealing with the things that you had to deal with. Okay. Well, of course since I've been home, uh two thousand and eight I actually landed back on planet earth was what i say uh on mother's day of 2008 which was one of the greatest mother's day gift that i can give to my mother right so um since i've been home i've actually been able to again publish two books i released my own short film that was actually in the Haiti heritage black film festival in right. durham in 2012 it's entitled stray and when I was in prison, I woke up in the middle of the night, like 2 o'clock in the morning, jumped off my bunk and, and, and just grabbed some paper. And in 20 minutes, I spit out this whole screenplay. And it's about a bullet trapped inside of the head of a drug dealer. I personified the bullet. And, you know, if a bullet was inside your head, he'd be apathetic. He wouldn't even care about you. And, you know, we say a bullet has no name on it. So it's straight. But it's right. an acronym for showing truth, reaching all youth. Wow. Exactly. And it's like a 12-minute short film. Uh, you can right. find that on um, my website, which is MikeRayAnderson.com, M-I-K-E-R-A-E-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N.com. Right. And some of the other things that's actually picking up right now, they got a documentary coming out on my life. That's going to be used for the Equal Justice Initiative wow. out of Montgomery, Alabama. And this is dealing with mass incarceration right. and things that's going on in, in Alabama. Because, you know, they have a law where if you get put on death row, if you have a public offender and you're on death row for more than 15 years, you have to drop your public offender and actually your public defender and actually represent yourself. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's crazy. So that mass incarceration going on, you know, the Jim Crow is at large down there. Yeah. So. Man. This documentary hopefully will give some people the insight to what's going on in poverty-stricken communities. And then not only that, you know, my autobiography is getting ready to come out uh, this summer. It's going to be released this August, right. and it's going to be called The Book of Malachi. And the reason why I chose oh. that because my son's name, my two-and-a-half-year-old son's name is Malachi. Right. And if you think about it, Malachi is the uh, last book in the Old Testament. So after the Old Testament comes the New mm-hmm. Testament. So after my son comes the New Testament, I have to leave that legacy behind for my son. Definitely. You know, they, they, you know they're going to say, oh, yeah, your, your, your father was an ex-felon. But he's going to say, but my father accomplished a lot. Right. Yeah. So and, and, and then that's going to transition into the movie, which is going to be called A Polished Soul, right. the Mike Ray Anderson story. And that's based on my nonprofit. Also, I have a nonprofit. It's a 501c3 where I deal with adjudicated youth wow. um, called Polished Souls. Right. And the website for that is polishedsouls.com p-o-l-i-s-h-e-d-s-o-u-l-s dot com and I deal with a lot of juvenile delinquents based on my life Definitely. try to mentor them and you know we go to different places and I expose them to different things because some of them have never even been outside their backyard or off their street corner Definitely. so yeah. we go to different places I took them to a, a baseball game at the Durham Bulls baseball stadium one day had them in the skybox right. and got sponsored and, and, and they was like they felt like kings so the goal is to, to, to take our kids off the streets and make them feel like kings again, show them that they are from a royal priesthood, Definitely. that they are, you know, a peculiar nation and not this nation that everybody has downcasted. Exactly. And cast astray. Exactly. So, yo, I, um, I really appreciate you coming on the show, man, and uh, telling the people your story, sharing it with them and not being afraid to let people know that, um, you know, that sometimes as men we do fall. It's not always somebody exactly, else's brother. fault. You know, and then, but you can pick yourself back up with the help of uh, of God and the people around you that support you and that believe in you. And uh, I guess the main thing we could take out of this story from you, man, I could take out of today is that you can, you got to believe. Got to believe. In the vision. In the vision. Write it, make it plain, and then believe in it. Exactly. So, yo, what we want to make sure y'all do is that y'all want to get in contact with my man Mike Anderson. You know what to do. He spelled out all. Do you have a Twitter and all that? I have a Twitter. And right, it's at Mike Ray you. Anderson. Okay. Follow me at Mike Ray Anderson, M I K E R A E A N D E R S O N. All right. And what about in your Instagram? Or? I got Instagram. I'm Mike is underscore. No, Mike is focused underscore 72. All right. And then what about uh, Facebook? Yeah. Son of Mike Anderson. 
There it is. So now you guys know how to get in contact with him. You can get a copy of the books that he has. He has two. And understand that these are poetries and proverbs. And this is just a lot. It's just a lot of information in here. And you, and you can get a little bit of the inspiration behind how, why he wrote these. So it'll be really, really worth the buy. So just go ahead and uh, make sure y'all highlight them. Check out the website. I'm Rob One, Big Time TV. Appreciate y'all for watching us. We out. Peace. Get enough of me. Yo, mister. Big stuff. I'm the overweight. I'm Prince. Dominator MC. Heavy D. Constant weight gainer. And since I choose the weight not to lose, I will stay this way so that I can. Okay, okay. It's so, it's so. And don't forget to tell them that I.